Well, the boys are back at home. Noah didn't take enough pictures of Scotland, and people are letting off rapists again. So it looks like it's time for me to get to work. My first story this week won't surprise many of you, and honestly, that might be the most depressing part. Because in a year where I've done three or four judge gives a guy 10 minutes and time out for rape stories already, I've got another one. And look, I know that usually my response to these stories is to say, fuck this judge. He looks like a kumquat impregnated the inconceivable guy from Princess Bride. And that's true. Fuck this judge, and he does look like that. But I want to try something different this week and break this decision down for you. I want to do it because of some listener feedback I got about Brock Turner. We have a listener. I'm going to call him Tony. And Tony replies to pretty much any This Week in Misogyny segment that isn't about Iran or Afghanistan by playing devil's advocate. And I've tried. Honestly, I have. I hate to sound bitchy, but I have poured hours of my life into explaining everything from the wage gap to maternity leave to this dude. And between you and me, I'm not sure I made a dent. And sure enough, when the Brock Turner thing happened, he chimed in. His point was basically that he didn't understand why I and others like me were so upset about the light sentencing. Did I just want to see Turner punished out of a sense of revenge? Wasn't it better for everyone if he wasn't in jail costing taxpayers money? And wouldn't the public nature of his case make him much less likely to offend? And surprisingly, I don't think Tony is the only one who is under this impression. So rather than moving right along, I want to really break this down for you because it's important you and Tony understand just how insidious this and the other decisions like it truly are. So first, the facts. Last week, an eastern Montana man admitted in open court to repeatedly raping his 12-year-old daughter. And as punishment for his crime, the judge, John McKeon, handed down the hefty sentence of, I shit you not, 60 days in jail. Instead of the mandatory minimum of 25 years with a recommended sentence of 75 to 100 years. And as has happened many times this year, the press got a hold of the story. People were mortified. People signed online petitions, rents, repeat. And also, as has happened many times this year, McKinnon released a letter to the Associated Press explaining his decision and his reasoning. And it's not unfamiliar to the lenient sentencing we've seen in the past. First, he points out that technically, the recommended sentence was always pending an evaluation. Then he explains that the defendant will be registered as a sex offender, and then concludes by pointing out that nobody asked for a harsher sentence in court, including the victim's mother and grandmother, who pled on the rapist's behalf. He also, again, like many of the judges we've heard from this year on cases like this, goes on to talk about the importance of rehabilitation and the futility of punishment, yada, yada, yada. And you know what? If this were consistent, I'd agree. If this judge had never handed down a jail sentence to an addict for possession or incarceration for someone in desperate circumstances for theft, I'm on board. I would count him as someone who inherently understands that the punitive nature of our judicial system is broken, and I would commend that. But, of course, that's not the case. No, this asshole and the many other judges like him seem only to get bit by the mercy bug when it comes to violation of women's bodies, and that is what's so problematic about these decisions. If you want to reinforce a misogynistic rape culture— a culture that makes women afraid to report when they've been sexually assaulted, creating a system that makes reporting rape an ordeal with an ever-diminishing chance of justice is a great place to start. Think about it. Based on any study you care to name, huge swaths of assaults on women in this country go unreported. And they largely do so because we work in a legal system that, purposeful or not, is hostile to women. Getting a rape kit? Degrading, frightening, and often painful. Reporting a rape? Again, terrifying, uncomfortable, and disheartening process. Not to mention sitting through the trial where the other side does their absolute best to make it look like your assault either didn't happen or was your fault. And when you finally reach the end of that process, eh, he probably won't do it again. 30 days. He gets a month. And you? You're stuck with it forever. And we don't do this with other crimes. Can you imagine this at the end of a murder trial? Of course not. And statistically, you're way less likely to murder again than you are to rape. But you can bet your ass that Tony and others like him wouldn't have chimed in with the philosophy of punishment 101 if Lizzie Borden had gotten three weeks of community service. And that's a distinction that's pretty fucking important to understand. 
I and many others like me aren't mad because we thirst for vengeance. We're just tired of the buck stopping once again at women's bodies. And on that somber note, I'll turn things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.